Himself. Yeah, like, okay, respect, that's good. Uh... Yeah, we'll definitely snitch on that guy. Chill pill man. Yeah. Easy. Relax, dude. Everything is fine. Yeah, just go ahead, guys. Don't worry. I can totally be trusted. Oi, Blin! What's going on? Oh, yeah, of course. Here, take this. Whew, great, we are back at the camp. Well, this is like the best cheese you can find in the zone. It's not the one that you can eat, but the one that will make you a lot of friends. So, wait, you mean... How did I grab this one so fast? Well, I can tell you, because I have something on my gear that makes me super quick in grabbing cheeses and of course it is a pouch all right stalkers and while we have covered the majority of um, content about uh, how your stock costume could look like how you can make a costume how you can buy one we have not covered the part of actually adding stuff onto your costume of course like this costume is cool I love it but it's personalized like I added those Amazing uh, patches I got from uh, Comrade Kish. He also made those one. They're quite cool. I love them. And of course, you know, like you can already see it here the weathering on the costume. You can see like the dirt on the costume. Sure, that everything adds detail. But more visible detail are pieces of equipment. And one of those pieces just tried to escape. And it's actually this one it's the respirator. The basic stalker respirator, you all know it from the games. Um, the one that doesn't really exist in real life too much, but the respirator and the oxygen ba uh, tanks. And uh, by the way, if you want to have those, those filters that you can put on 3M respirators, you should check out my other videos because you can download them for free, you can print them for free, and they contain no asbestos. They won't protect you if anything, though. So even if your dog farts in a room and you have those, they will not help. And as we know, small dog farts are the worst ones. So, of course, you can also add a detector on your gear. You can add mag pouches, you can add several kind of camel bags, rucksacks, whatever. Uh, do whatever you like, what feels authentic to you. you know what you want to represent. Uh, when you are some kind of bandit, loan or whatever, just get one of those good old uh, Czechoslovakian ba backpacks or one of those here. Um, I think this is a German Gebirgsjäger rucksack. <laughs> Gebirgsjäger rucksack. Um, they're not too expensive, amazing pieces of gear. Or you can make p pieces of gear. And one of the pieces that I made in the past are pouches. And this is like the first thing I ever made whatsoever. It's my first piece of leather tooling, leather crafting. If you can see, it's like literally my first piece because <laughs> the seams are a disaster. And like even, I, <laughs> I kind of didn't have the proper metalware, so I used like a screw uh, for that to hold the strap, but it worked. It's a, it's a ton of pictures and you know, you can just shove it in and it sits nice and tightly. In fact, it was actually a little bit too tight, so I had to like get this lever wet, stuff that thing inside it dry. That's a good thing about lever, lever works. It can stretch for a somewhat decent amount, not too much. But 
that was my first project. Um, I do not think that this represents what I'm doing right now anymore because like this is how I started and this here is how I work right now. So that's basically a bag that I made out of scrap leather, you know, like pieces like that that I put together and put into a bag. I mean, just look at those seams, they're not perfect, but ah, just like working with leather. It's an amazing material, and especially if you have a source where you can get cheap scrap uh, pieces of leather, like not big part pieces, bigger than like this. You can do a lot of amazing stuff with it, and you can do this. So, to actually make sure that we just don't experiment, but that we do something proper, and for that, I made a pattern. I don't like this one. First of all, you'll need some basic leather. I'm using this one. It's just normal blank leather. It's not dyed, it's not prepared, it's not waxed. It's um, regular, naturally tanned leather. It's amazing because if you make this one wet, it will take new shape after drying. So if your um, pouch gets a little bit too tight, you still can like get the leather wet, shove your medic kit in there, let it dry, and you can at least compensate like a few millimeters, maybe even up to half a centimeter with this method. So first of all, make sure you get your lever, get it on a good surface, cut out your uh, pattern, and after you have cut out your pattern, it should probably look somewhat like this. And what I do not do while cutting out the lever is, I do not cut out the window, I'll cut the window after I'm done with all the holes. Um, if you want to have it a little bit easier, you can simply take some regular like office tape and tape the pattern onto your lever. Just be careful, the parts that are in contact with the tape are somewhat ruined because of the glue. Like, they're not unusable, but they just don't look as nice. And I try to avoid using more tape than necessary, so I'll, I tape that one on. And I used my awl to, you know, punch all the holes that I need into this. Um, for the holes, you can probably use a hole punch. I wouldn't recommend it though, for one simple reason. Hole punches tend to have relatively large holes. I use the awl and the stalkers that are on a tight budget. You probably can use a nail, a hammer and some block of scrap wood. Can't recommend it though, but I can't say it wouldn't be possible. If you go for a very budget look or if you want to have a very rugged look, I would recommend just skipping every second hole with that method. Just when you do it, be very careful. Do not go too close to the corners. Do not go too close to each other because Lever can tear, lever will rip, and this is something we want to avoid. So, now at that point, we are done with getting all the holes. I'll cut out the window, and after I'll cut out the window, I will start sewing this thing, or in fact, stitching. Unfortunately, I forgot to tell you that we have to dye the lever before we can actually stitch it. So, the ones that do not have uh, dyed lever now are lucky enough to go through this awful process with me. Um, go to a room with an open window, make sure you have enough fresh air. The lucky ones that use already dyed leather can skip this part, the others have to go through this with me. Um, we have, before we start putting everything together, to dye the leather with leather dye. Um, first of all, make sure you have a surface that's safe and that will not let any of that dye get through. Second, make sure that you have gloves and use like at least proper rubber gloves because if this stuff gets on your skin, you will look like you ate like a lot of chocolate, I guess. And even more important, if you have carpet or if you have like a, like dogs with white fur, keep this away at all costs from carpet and dogs because this is brown leather dye it will look like poop stains and it's almost impossible to get it out of 
There are several ways to applicate this. I like to use cheap, trashy dollar store sponges. Um, they're just very trashy, they're cheap. Uh, if you are done with them, you can dispose of them. Not a big deal. To start dyeing, we will take some water and put it in like a naughty cap. This is my naughty cap. I just threw everything that's somewhat dye related into this. Put it safe, not on my white desk, but on the tin foil. And we we'll open up the forbidden sauce. We'll take a little bit of the forbidden sauce, just a little dip, not, not too much. Already, as you see, it's turning brown instantly. We shake it a little bit and we just dip it into the water, and you will see that the lever will suck it up instantly. More. Put it in foil and we just go across the level with it. So now that this thing is nice and wet, we can actually put it away and let it dry. As you see, the paint is dry and I think it looks pretty decent. Of course, the inside looks like hell, but no one will see the inside. But the outside, like when I take a look at the lever, compared to what it used to be, like this, this, even, this piece you can puzzle inside, this looks amazing. and. We are going to put this together now by stitching it together. For the stitching process we cannot use the settler stitch because we want the edges to be like attached to each other. We do not want to have any place that is overlapping or folding. So no settler stitch which is sad because the settler stitch is the best stitch you can use and it's also something machines cannot do. If you learn how to make a good settler stitch you are ahead of every sewing machine on the market. But for this one is cross stitch. Cross stitch is quite simple. Uh, basically it's just a stitching pattern that creates you know crosses and you work your way up towards the end. Um, there are two sides. One side has a cross, the other side has a straight string. To form a cross, of course, the most simple thing would be that you would just go into this hole and pull it through, and you would have like half a cross. But the problem is, you would have to turn the prop every time and pull it out from the inside, so make sure that you actually exit at the opposite side. Now we have our first cross and we will repeat this process for the entire pouch. So let's get started. Alright, so this is the first half and as you see, pretty pretty crosses, like this looks well structured, this looks even. You may have noticed at this point that something is missing and this is straps. And for a certain reason I have not included any instructions how to make straps uh, for this piece of equipment because every stalker gear is different, every stalker belt is different and I 
kinda expect you to be smart enough to solve this problem for yourselves. Because if I would give you a solution for this, this solution would only work for people that have, you know, belts similar to me. For others, it would be a total disaster. So I decided to, you know, skip this for the pattern and skip this for the instruction. But as you see, I just, you know, cut out a few leather strips, used rivets and a hole puncher and this is how I edit it. Yeah, but I will not take you along doing the rest because this is simply not too interesting for you, so we'll skip this process up. We'll see each other after I assemble the entire thing. Wow, what a journey, wasn't it? But if this was your first time working with Lever, then let me tell you, I am proud of you. Trying something new is difficult sometimes, and Lever can be difficult to work with. So, you took the challenge, and you succeeded. Or you're going to take the challenge and succeed. This is one of the results, the other one is on my bed right now. If you feel confident, you can be creative, you can like, cut up the upper part if you don't like it you can add like straps to lock it down here and you will have like locking mechanism you can even if you get the lever wet and use a nail or anything similar to a nail if it's dull even better and carve in your name into the lever or something else be creative this is your costume and it should be a little bit personal and I'm more than interested to see your results so if you do this, if you work on this, if you finish this, drop me a picture either on Facebook in the comments or in my Instagram DMs. I would be more than eager to see what you made out of this. When I started out with Lever, I had barely any skills, like, I gotta be real with you, I had no idea what I was doing, but I got creative, so when I wanted to make holes, I just used the fork and <laughs> got the, and just pressed the fork into the lever so I have like a, a similar distance across the side to be able to, you know, make my holes for the stitching. Nowadays of course I have somewhat decent equipment, not everything is perfect, like some of my stuff is still pretty low budget, but I kinda get along with it. And now I can do stuff like, you know, like this. So this is what I do now, but I start with this. This is okay. I would still wear that, probably I will. In fact, this piece of equipment can be seen in a stalker movie. Maybe some of you will even recognize it. If you haven't seen our movie project yet, I highly recommend checking it out. It's like 6 minutes, so not much time is gone, but it's definitely worth seeing it. If you haven't done that, either check out the link up here or the link in the description below. I'll be more than happy to see you guys in the comments under that video, because we put a lot of effort into that and we have quite a good production quality. Thank you very much guys for watching this video. My name is Terry Costumes and my mission is to take video games to reality through costumes. And if you want to support me on that mission, I would be more than happy to see you either in the comments below, giving me a like or under my stalker movie. If you want to support me furthermore, there is always the option to check out my other socials, Facebook, Instagram. If you want to see more content in the future, make sure to subscribe to my channel and we will see each other next time in the world of gothic. Until then, Good hunting stalkers.